there, thanks for joining me to paint. Today we are going to be working on some watercoloring. So I picked up this um, pad of Arteza watercolor paper. It's got 30 sheets. It looks like it is 140 pounds. And I picked up three of these notepads for like $22, 21 and some change. So I thought I would give it a try because that didn't seem as expensive as buying um, the watercolor paper I usually buy. So I thought we'd try it out. So my idea today, is I'm go I went ahead and stamped this gardening chicks image and this is a card kit over in the store I'll put a link to that down in the description box well I'll put a link to all this stuff down in the description box in case you'd like to pick something up but this is a stamp that's in the current card kit that I just made so my thought is is that we are going to go ahead and paint that today with our Daniel Smith essentials watercolor set so I went ahead and I found this little um, box and this came with some other watercolors at one time and I just went ahead and put my paints into that and then I have a plate to um, do some mixing on and then of course our paints and then a paper towel and some water and my blow dryer and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and let's see I'm trying to move them around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my paint brush and this is a silver black velvet number four I'm gonna start with that we'll see how that goes but I think that I will maybe do um, something around the background first maybe so that way I don't have to worry about um, no let's paint the chicks first so I went ahead and I brought my swatch card that we made the other day in here too so I do have that off here to the side so I can kind of see what colors we have and I'm thinking that we're going to use this yellow, which is um, Hansa yellow. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. I'm gonna put it over here on my plate. I'll grab a little bit more. And this has been sitting in my little tray here or this paint palette for a few days, so it's dry now. Actually, I put it in here after I made the swatch book so that I could let it dry. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the new gamboge color too. So we're going to mix a little bit of that up, add a little bit more water. And we're going to go ahead and grab some of that. We'll mix it on our tray over here, our palette. And we'll see what we can do with that. Okay, so we're going to take this. Go ahead and rinse my brush off. So I'm going to get Clean it off and then I'm going to dab it. Let me stick my paper towel underneath this book. Maybe that will hold it down. There we go. <laughs> All these technical things. Okay, so I'm going to dab it off and then I'm going to pick up some of my paint and I'm just going to paint my birds here. And I just chose the very first page in the book to stamp it on and I stamp my image with some um, Versamark, not Versamark, Versafine ink. So that is waterproof. That works out good. And I went ahead and just um, colored or painted right over the top of his wing there. I got quite a puddle right here, so I'm going to pick some of that up with my paintbrush. I'll move it up here. And then I'm going to brush it back down here to the bottom. So I want it to be darker at the bottom of his body. And I'll do the same for this little guy. I'm gonna grab a little bit more. I'm gonna go over here and we'll do this one. I got a little bit on my flower there, so I'm gonna rinse off my brush and then dab it on my paper towel. Let's see if we can that up a little bit. I'll grab a different paper towel to dab it. Give this little guy a second coat here. I'm 
Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. And then we'll come back and we'll add a little bit more color. Dab my flower again here. I didn't do a very good job of pulling that color up. Let's go down a little bit. Move my stuff around here so you can see a little bit better. There we go. I guess you guys can decide if you would rather see more of the painting up close or if you'd rather see the whole um, palette and my mixing and all that stuff too. If you leave me a comment down below, I will. we can decide which one we like doing the best and then we'll do it that way. I put some more paint right here because I wiped it up when I dabbed it with a paper towel. All right, so we're gonna need some color on our flower. So let's do um, some of this rose. So that's gonna be, if I get some water in there. And I'm gonna transfer that to my palette. Our quinacridone rose. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a drop of water on there so I can dilute it a little bit. And then we'll use that to paint. That way we can darken it up by adding some more color. And if you just use the tip of your brush, it's pretty got a good point on it, this brush does. So it works really good for getting into some of those small areas if you're careful. So far this paper doesn't seem so bad. I like that it's um it's pretty white. Kind of like um it's not completely, it's not pure white, but it looks kind of like eggs, eggshell maybe. But it's whiter than some that I've seen. Looks good for getting that one started. Let's do the next pile. Grab some more paint off my plate. And my bird here is still a little bit damp, so I'm going to try not to get any color down on him. Because what will happen is it will run down into his, um, his body. If it's wet, it will pick up that color, so I'm just being care extra careful. here. I picked the stamp just because it was on my desk already because I just got done making the card kit up. So it was already sitting out. I thought this would be an easy way for us to try using it for something else. You don't always have to use your stamps to make cards. And if you're not a drawer like me, it's much nicer to have something you can stamp and then color in. Okay, so now let's go, let me see, are these guys dry? Mm, they're still a little bit damp. Let's go ahead and do, um, I'm going to darken them up. So let's go ahead and add some more of this new gamboge to our yellow we already had out. So I'm just going to add that to darken it up. And then we'll bring that in and put some on our birds here to give them a little bit of some shadows. my brush off and dab it on my paper towel. I'm going to suck up some of this I have here on this one. He's got quite a puddle. 
and then we'll rinse again dab on my paper towel so now I just have water and my brush is a little bit damp I'm gonna come in and soften this edge and I'm collecting ink so I'm in our paint so I'm gonna go ahead and pick some of that on my brush and then I dab it on my paper towel to get rid of it and then I come back with just my water and soften that edge a little bit I've dried my brush off quite a bit, so I'm going to go and I got it wet. And we'll go over here and do the same thing to this one. And again, you want to wipe your brush off after you've collected some ink. And you just bring that up. We can smooth that line a little bit. And this little guy here. And a little bit of color right here. about adding a little bit more to this guy here too. And my rinse and dab to soften that edge. Okay, I'm liking those. So let's go up here and we'll add some more of our quinacridone rose to our flower. I'm going to darken it up by adding a little bit more of my color to my little spot I have on my palette. And then let's make it darker up here. I think I got too much. Dab off a little bit. Make our flowers darker up here towards the center. This one I went ahead and just pulled some right off of my um, palette or off of out of the t the little container I have the ink in or the paint in so it's a little bit thicker And then I'm going to dip it in my diluted stuff. Oops, I probably should have done that one a little bit more. And we'll bring this out a little bit. And I think I'll darken this up. Little bit up in here. I'm going to rinse my brush and then I'm going to have just water and I dabbed off my brush so it's not quite so wet. And then we're going to come in and I'm just going to streak this away from my pile that I have up here towards the bottom. And I wiped my brush off there because I think it was collecting some ink. Oh, I didn't want to have it too thick. Okay, our chicks here dry. Ooh, they're getting there. Okay, let's go ahead and let's mix up some green for our flowers or for our leaves. So let's do 
Oh, let's try some... Hmm, we're going to need kind of a darker... No, let's go with our yellow, which was um, Ansa yellow. So I'm going to dab a little dab of that onto my tray, or onto my plate. And then I'm going to pick up some phthalo blue. I finally figured out how to say that. I'm going to dab a little bit of that on there. We'll mix that together. And we'll get some green. And I knew that because I made my swatch card. So I could just look over at my swatch card and see which two colors made some green or what color green. Quite a few of them made green once you mixed them together. And I could pick the one I like the best. We're just gonna paint our leaves. Pick up some more paint. And if your flower's still wet, you might want to give it a second. You don't want to get any of that color on your flower because it will bleed into that. Just picking up more paint on my brush periodically off my plate. use some of our yellow weeds for our bird up here on this center of the flower. That doesn't seem dark enough. Do a little bit different one. I'm going to use the one that I used for the shadow on the bird. Now we're going to need, for the little beaks and legs, we're going to need something a little bit darker. So let's do um, New Gamboge and then a little dab of our, quine, um, our um, Quinacridone Rose on there. And that will give us an orangish red color. in there make it a little bit more orange okay that looks better and then I'm gonna rinse my brush off and we're gonna dab a little bit up and we'll see if we can use this little tiny point on this brush to do these little dinky feet and this little beak some of that to my flower up here, the center of my flower up here. And then I rinse my brush off and I'm just going in with just some water and kind of tapping this edge to soften it out a little bit. Now I think I need a little bit more Something a little bit darker for our green. So let's add, oh, 
let's add some of our new gamboge to the little green mixture we already had. Let's see if we can darken this up just a little bit. a brush off and grab some of this new color. my brush and then I go in and soften some of these lines. I've just water on my brush and then you periodically wipe it off on my paper towel so I don't get too much um, ink buildup. So now they're going to need something to sit on. So let's see here. Let's do, I don't know if I want it to be that green. Let's put a little dab of water on our paint, our pal palette. And then I'm going to pick up some of my green I mixed and dilute it with that water. And then we will put that down here on the bottom. It's not quite so dark. Let's try that first. Closer to my little chicks. But I don't want to paint them green, so I'm trying to be really careful not to get my water on them. green to my puddle. Darken it up. Let's come back. And since my paper is still wet, when I put the, the water on it or my ink on there, it kind of it pools away from my and from the images and goes out to where the water where it stops. Over here it's drier so it didn't it didn't go anywhere. But if the paper's wet it will spread out. Now I just got my brush wet and I'm coming along and smoothing some of this out. darkening it up. Now what are they going to need? They're going to need something for them behind them. So let's see. We need some kind of blue. Let's do... 
how about phalo blue and well just how about phalo blue dilute it with some water and let's see I'm thinking I'm gonna get my paper wet so I have just water on here and I'm gonna come around some of this stuff I don't want to get too close I don't want to make sure not to touch my stuff so when I put the blue on there it will pick that it will run into that color so make sure when you put your water down it only goes um, up to the the line okay let's try that paper has um, a little rough texture to it. I kind of like that. Made the background look really cool. Okay, so I'm going to let that, I'm going to rinse my brush off and get some more water. And then I'm going to go around up here. See how I touched my little spot right there and it ran up here into my area. That's kind of cool. pick up some blue and we're just going to continue around to the other side you have too much water and dab a little bit off See if we can get a little bit closer in here without getting it on the flowers. This is where you need one of those, where you need this really small pointy end. Thank you. 
I need a little bit more blue in here. So I think the Arteza paper did pretty good for what we used it for today. Um, I really like the texture on it just for this image, but then again, I did not get my paper excessively wet, so I don't know how it's gonna do for pelling or how it will do in buckling in terms of if I really got it wet. So maybe next time we will tear it out of the book and tape it down and see how much wetness we can put on there before it gets out of control. But for these cute little images, I think it's the perfect paper for stamping, doing some, your watercoloring, something really quick and you could cut it out and use it on the front of a card. I think it'd be perfect for that. But we'll try it again on a later date and we'll see what it can do further with more water. So anyway, I hope you had fun doing some painting with me today. If you have a question, leave me a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the, the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do that. And make sure to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so that when I make a new video, you will be informed. Or if I'm doing a live class, it will send you a notice so that you can come join me and chat. So anyway, I hope you're having a fabulous day and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.